Batman has returned, but I wish he hadn't because he has really let himself go. There are two types of gameplay in the Sega CD version of Batman Returns. The first is a pretty cool driving game. The driving levels are exclusive to the Sega CD version of the game. You drive the Batmobile around and shoot at other cars. It reminds me of OutRun, except you have a much cooler car and are killing people. Like OutRun, you have a time limit, but instead of trying to make it to a checkpoint, you have to blow up a certain number of enemies. It's pretty fun, but right from the beginning it is way too hard. The time limits are often too short, and the enemies take too many hits to defeat. The developers would have only had to fix one of those two problems, and the game would have been much more playable. Near the end of the game, you also get to drive the Bat Ski Boat through the sewers. Yes, they actually named it the Bat Ski Boat. Instead of fighting other vehicles, you have to avoid the many obstacles and get to the checkpoint before time runs out. So this time it is like OutRun if OutRun took place in a sewer, and you, Suzuki, hated you. The game alternates between these driving stages and platforming stages. If you are playing the Genesis version, then you only get the platforming stages. Batman does not control very well. If he did, this game may have actually been pretty good. The stages are actually well designed. They were just designed for a Batman that didn't have crippling arthritis. The enemies move quickly, and it is difficult to avoid them. Batman has his grappling gun, but it isn't very easy to use. He gets a nice assortment of batarangs, but most of them aren't very powerful, and you don't get very many of them. You can also use your cape to glide. It is actually pretty cool, but it is underutilized. I would say that Batman moves like a man twice his age, but as the graphic novel The Dark Knight Returns showed, Batman ages gracefully. There is nothing graceful about the way he moves in this game. He moves very slowly and his attacks are stiff. I guess they were trying to simulate what it was really like for Michael Keaton wearing the heavy rubber bat suit. The driving controls actually work pretty well. They aren't perfect, but I think they are as good as you can get with the standard Genesis controller. Stylistically, the game matches the look of the movie. Sure, the bat suit is dark purple rather than black, but that is a common compromise to allow a character to stand out against a dark background, or to show more detail. The platforming section of the game looks pretty nice. It's nothing exceptional for the Genesis, but it is pretty detailed. The graphics for the driving levels look really nice. These stages move really fast and don't suffer from any slowdown at all, even when there is a lot going on. The original music fits the game well, Probably better than the film's music would. If you are playing the cartridge version, well, then you don't get the nice music. The sound effects in Batman Returns aren't very good. Most of what you will hear are very generic electronic sounds and Batman's muffled grunting. The game starts about halfway through the movie where the Penguin frames Batman for murder. The intro cinema is pretty nice, but it does assume that players are familiar with the movie. There is no dialogue in the opening cinema, and there is no story at all once the game starts. You just move through levels loosely based on the movie. Some are pretty accurate to the look of the movie, and some have little to no relation to the movie. You will notice some familiar enemies from the movie, but the game also pits you against living architecture. The story of the movie is woefully underutilized. Catwoman only makes two short appearances. It is essentially a cameo. The only mention of Max Shrek is the part of the game that takes place in and around his store. Content-wise, there is some relatively tame violence. Batman beats up a lot of thugs. In the driving stages, you blow up other vehicles, presumably killing the occupants. Some of the female members of the Red Triangle Circus wear revealing clothes. The difficulty is this game's major problem. The controls are a major contributing factor, but the truth is, if the developers had trouble perfecting the controls, they could have made adjustments to the gameplay in order to compensate, but they clearly didn't. In fact, they seemed to be rubbing it in the player's face. They made most of the surfaces in the last level small, slippery platforms. The developers are sadists, and to really rub it in, I actually got the last boss's life gauge down to nothing a few times, but he still didn't die. Don't really think you'll win, do you? I don't normally review a game that I haven't beaten, but this game just isn't worth any more of my time or effort 
and I don't think it is worth yours. The sad thing is, this could have been a good game. I think that it only needed a few more weeks of development, but alas, it is not a good game. It is not even a decent game. It is a bad game that really isn't worth your time. If you see it dirt cheap, it might be worth putting in your CD player for the music, or for playing the driving parts, but otherwise, avoid this game. The only other good thing in this game is getting to see Batman try to run up a down escalator. And I just showed that to you for free. You're welcome.